Hey, it's me, Evil Tutin, and we are here for possibly the final episode of Seven Days of Skeptic. Uh, we opened the doors in this area, and now we can enter William's door. Oh my god. William, what have you done? Indeed. There's the access card. Let's get out of here. Yeah. There's, there's a lot going on in here. Uh, nothing that you can do. This is, by the way, uh, Serena's head, if you haven't. It's Serena's head. It's still wearing her glasses. Yeah, you probably figured that out. Um, don't really know what to do here. Looks like someone's been trying to stitch a body together from the parts of three different people. Well, anyway, there's nothing you can do here, so, uh, you know. We should just get to Adam. And make sure that we leave in the escape pods. Before you do that, however, uh, once again, I would like to remind you to save your game. I've got it. I got a security card. Great, give it here. Should have seen William's room. It was... Mm, body parts on every surface, blood all over the floor. Oh God, please, let's just forget it. I didn't think William could be capable of such a thing. What other explanation is there? That locker. There was something evil in that locker, I know it. Oh, come off it, John. There was nothing in that locker, but... But what? N nothing No, you were going to say something. What was in that box, Adam? I, I can't, John. You opened the box. I'm so sorry, John. Why? <laughs> I had this awful dream. Something in the box that killed us all. And when I woke up, I was so terrified. I just had to get a look inside the box, make sure it was harmless. I just couldn't have slept before I did. What was in it, Adam? Well, that's the weird thing. No human remains at all. There was a welding mask, a leather apron, and a machete. Oh. And the funny little wooden doll thing. Oh. There was this leather lying on top of it all. Oh. To whom it may concern. If you are reading this and the box has been opened, then you must understand that you are in extreme danger. Immediately after reading this letter, seal the box shut again and flush it back into space. The evil must not be released upon mankind again. At time of writing, I am an agent of a joint MI5-MI6 operation called the Special Talent Project. Details of my post here should be on record with the British Secret Services. My real name is classified information by my own request. I am commonly known as Trilby. In the year 1939, when I was a cat burglar, I was intimately involved in what became known as the Defoe Manor Incident. I, along with Simone Taylor, James Fowler, Philip Hardy, and a man called AJ, found ourselves trapped in the Foe Manor at the mercy of a wraith. After five days and the deaths of AJ and Hardy, I was able to identify the ghost as that of Sir Roderick Defoe's retarded son, who am, whom I later named John Defoe for the sake of convenience. I was able to exorcise the spirit with the assistance of Taylor and Fowler, and Defoe Manor was destroyed by fire. I returned to my thieving lifestyle, confident that John the Foe was at peace. In 1995, I was, I was apprehended by the authorities and returned for, amne for amnesty was offered the opportunity to lend my services to the government. I took a position as a field agent in the Special Talent Project. In the early months of 1997, I was brought news. I was brought news that Simone Taylor had been murdered in her home by an assailant wielding a large slashing weapon. Sensing a connection, I immediately began my own investigations into activity around the Foe Manor. It was as I had suspected. Looters and trophy hunters had discovered the idol intact in the ruins of the mansion and it was constantly changing hands in the antique network. The idol was a crude African trinket picked up by Sir Roderick on one of his many adventures in the 19th century Africa. When Sir Roderick used it to beat his unwanted son to death, it became the vessel for John's confused soul. In 
in the mansion, merely touching the idol would cause a person to be possessed by the wraith, mindlessly murdering everyone they had encountered for as long as the possession lasted, usually a couple of hours. Calling in some favors, I had the idol brought to me, heavily sealed in protective casing. It had to be destroyed, that much was clear. I considered burning it, but I deemed that too risky. The evil could have remained in the ashes spread out over a wider area. I realized then that mankind would never be safe as long as any trace of John the Four remained on Earth. Fortunately, an unmanned, an unmanned space probe is to be launched in September of this year, assigning to explore, assigned to explore the outer regions of the solar system. I have placed all of John Defoe's artifacts in a metal coffin and persuaded NASA, NASA, <laughs> NASA to send it off into space with the probe. As soon as I have finished this letter, I will seal it into the coffin with everything else and have the package shipped to Cape Canaveral. I remain confident that this will ensure that John Defoe remains exiled from the human race for the rest of time. Well. However, the fact that you are reading and presumably understanding this document indicates that my confidence was misplaced. Please, no matter what year it is or how advanced you believe you are, do not attempt to combat John the Foe. He cannot be destroyed by conventional means or reasoned with on human terms. You must eject him back into space immediately and tell no one of your discovery. The lives of you and everyone you love are at stake. The decision you make now, you will have to live with forever. You read the letter? Why didn't you shoot the box back into space? I didn't think it was for real. And how would I have explained that to the captain? For God's sake, Adam. And besides, I didn't touch anything else in the box. I just closed the box, left everything how it was and went back to bed. Do you really think I caused all this? No, Adam, I don't. Somehow I think that box would have found a way to get itself open somehow. What? Let's just get out of here. Here's the access card. And... Do it, do it, do it. He did it with his feet somehow. <laughs> but you only have a couple of seconds to close uh, the hatch. Oh, look at that. Look at that. William, what are you doing? Oh, good, you're awake. I wanted to be able to apologize. For, for what, William? I'm really sorry about this, John. If there were any other option, you'd know I'd take it. But he needs your body parts. We're so very nearly finished, and you'll be the last one. You forgive me, right, John? I... of course I forgive you, William. I'm so glad. So... There's the idol. And the abomination, <laughs> aptly titled so. So here's the scalpel. And what you have to do now is uh, get yourself loose. Loose. Until he says uh, left hand free. Then you take the scalpel. And you stab William. Now. And off we go. Sunday. Today we're being saved. <laughs> Presumably. I'm the only one left. All of my friends are dead. Not because we just had to bring that box aboard. The EFS Charisma will be here soon. I'm not sure what will be there to greet them. There must be something I can do. Something other than sitting, waiting to be killed. Bump. William. Oh my god, what did he do to you? <laughs> he needed eyes. 
He took my eyes, then he, heck, stabbed me right through. Where is he? Roaming the ship, looking for more people to kill. I'm so, so sorry, John. You were under his influence. You weren't acting under your own direct direction. Even so, <laughs> I've let a monster loose and killed us all. Guess I kind of made a hash out of my first posting, huh? <laughs> this wasn't your fault, William. You have to find a way to destroy him, John. Before the others arrive, before he's let loose on the Federation. What can I do? Take my stun gun. It's got a few shots left. If you can lure him outside the ship, you could... I could what? The radio... Rest in peace, Dr. Taylor. And now the epic ending music begins. Day 6. Final. So, how about we get off the ship? I'm not going to talk because the music's really awesome. I wanna just take in the atmosphere without my voice. Let's go. Well, I did not expect him to come out of uh, the captain's quarters, but once again, uh, here we are. Enjoy. Well, now the music's gone, that kinda sucks. Oh, no. No! <laughs> okay. And here he goes. Now this last part is a little bit tricky. What are you? What are you waiting for? Yeah, he's not moving. Anyway, you have to get up here, because we uh, withdrew the radio masts. And now, I mean, you probably figured out what you have to do. Um, you have to manage it exactly like this. The body was just an avatar. This is John the Foe, this is his soul. This is what must be destroyed. Well, I'm sad the music doesn't play out here. But you can't have everything. And now you go down here. And that's it. That's the charisma. It's over. Yep, that's it. We destroyed the idol. John Defoe is forever uh, defeated. Uh, you know, happy ending and all that. 
There are definitely no surprises waiting for us. Uh, <laughs> and I'm sorry I left. I, I kind of gave it away. No, but there's, you know, all we have to do now is just take off our suit uh, and, and greet the men of the EFS Charisma. And then the game is over and we can all go home. You know, and there is definitely, I mean, what, what else could there possibly be? Hey, where the hell did you come from? We thought this ship was a total death zone. What's been, on, what's been going on here? You're from the Charisma. Off-world security. Who are you? Somerset. Dr. Jonathan, ship's counselor. Dr. Jonathan. Is that him, Sergeant? That's him. That's the guy. What? You're Dr. Jonathan Somerset, formerly of the University of Ganymede? Yes. Dr. Jonathan Somerset is 65 years old. And more to the point, he's dead. He was killed six months ago by an unknown assailant. We only discovered last week that an individual was using his identity. I didn't mean any harm. Take him away, Sergeant. I didn't mean to hurt him. I've been unemployed for eight years. I just wanted to go to space! That was overacting. Another body in the brig, Lieutenant. Oh, that wasn't a question. <laughs> I'm repeating them all on Somerset. Or whoever, or whoever he is. Well, I can't see any other conclusion, can you? What's with the box? No idea, it's empty. Huh. So, seven days of skeptic, everybody. <laughs> I hope uh, you liked the ending, because I liked it. And uh, the reason why I said earlier uh, uh, that you should pay attention to the writing is because Yahtzee has cleverly put some hints throughout the game in the dialogue and in the gameplay and, and how the narrative develops uh, that is strongly hinting that Dr. Somerset is actually the one who is out of place on this ship, right? In the beginning, you have this whole dialogue about when William said, ah, oh, this is my first posting, I don't know, I feel out of place between all these veterans and I have this dream, you know, I'm afraid that someone points at me and finds out that I don't belong here and all that. Uh, then, of course, immediately after that, Barry, Captain Barry, uh, talks to talks to John and says, "Come on, you know this is standard procedure. You should know this." And he doesn't know. And then later on, he 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 doesn't know about where the captain's code book is, and he doesn't. It, it's so many. And the interesting, the most interesting part about the story for me is that he's the ship's. He's the fraud, you know, he, he's not a psychologist, he never went to the University of Ganymede. He's not, he's the only guy who has no business being there. And then he ends up doing everybody's jobs, because they all break down. And, and he is the one uh, that, that keeps it together. He's the one, he's doing the engineer's job, he's doing the, the captain, commander, everything. And, uh, and he's the one keeping it together. Is the, and that's, I don't know, that's such a cool twist somehow. I, I can't really, <laughs> I don't know. He's a good character. Uh, so there's two more games to go. And for those of you who, uh, who also agree that Trilby and Dr. Somerset are cool characters, uh, don't worry. Because you're gonna see them again. Yes, not only Trilby, I already said Trilby is gonna make a comeback. Uh, but we're also going to meet Dr. Somerset again. And so we have two more games to go, and uh, I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. I'm going to keep playing through them. And so this was Seven Days of Skeptic. Once again, hope you enjoyed the voice acting. <laughs> hope I didn't ruin the atmosphere so much, and I will see you guys next time.